Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to just another episode of the Epidemic Watch Talk series. Today with us, we have Dr. Hisham Musan, uh, uh, who has wide interest in qualitative research uh, in health economics, public health ethics, and health policy systems research. As a scientist at uh, the ICMR National Institute for Implementation Research on NCDs at Jodhpur in Rajasthan. And today he would provide us a broad overview of implementation research, uh, being an expert himself and worked uh, in the past as a faculty member at multiple institutions, including the Government Medical College in Palakkad, uh, uh, an assistant professor at the DM Wynad Institute of Medical Sciences in Wynad, and also an expert member and a project lead of multiple programs, including the program to set up a regional and technical resource center in Kerala for HTA. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Hisham, for agreeing uh, to speak in this meeting. Uh, the floor is all yours. So uh, thank you, Vinod, for that introduction. And uh, so uh, uh, like will be a part of this initiative of uh, CSRI, IGIB, and the other uh, collaborators on the Epidemic Watch initiative. So um, without further ado, I'll go into uh, my topic per se that has been allotted to me, is to give an idea, an overview as to what implementation research is all about. At the outset, I'd like to uh, attribute the uh, attribute courtesy and uh, to, to the the slides which I've used from Dr. Maria E. Fernandez, whose workshop I've been, I mean, uh, I've been fortunate enough to actually attend on implementation research. She's from the University of Texas. Uh, I've extensively borrowed her slides and uh, a few other slides in between as well. So without further ado, I'll go into the topic per se. So what we intend to uncover in this session is essentially what is implementation science and implementation research per se, how it differs from uh, clinical and public health research, and the different types of implementation in implementation research. So I think it's important that we first and try to understand what implementation science and what implementation research is all about. So uh, prior to this, it's important that we understand uh, what are the usual ultimate impact of a certain intervention that we intend to better the health of a population consistent. Broadly, we can actually bring them into two domains, one being the effectiveness of the said intervention, whether it actually works or not. And the second part being how far uh, how broadly and how deeply it actually reaches the intended population. So uh, various aspects that we generally look into an intervention, whether an intervention is uh, good or not for the population can be broadly classified into these two aspects. Whether and whether it reaches the intended point. Uh, uh, actually, uh, saying the latest research shows that we should actually do something with all this research. So, uh, what is the uh, actual uh, gap that seems to occur? between uh, research per se being done and how well it is implemented in a certain uh, context. So when we come across this research to practice gap, uh, one common issue that is raised by both uh, the research academia and the uh, end users is that the research academia tends to do a lot of research, but they often complain that we publish it, we disseminate it, but it's not uptake, uh, it's not taken up by the uh, grassroots uh, scenario where it is actually intended. 
Now, when you look at the other side of the coin, being the utilizers, they often complain that we are ready to receive any good inputs to better our work, but we receive research in a form that it is not actually implemented. can't seem to find its place in uh, our so when we uh, by uh, an absolute necessity it is this research to practice gap which implementation research has. now looking at this what is the magnitude of this where there is something called the publication pathway where you can see that the how the original research actually follows through a certain research pathway into final implementation so when we look at this what we see is that along the way of implementation research like uh, original research being translated into implementation we see a lot of places where this uh, the knowledge and uh, finally to summarize you can say that it takes around 17 years to turn 14 percent of original research for the benefit of patient health so there is essentially something going really wrong and implementation research tries to look into what actually can be done to minimize both the time and the loss of information. Now, before we go into the nitty gritty of implementation research, it is important that we understand the distinction between a few common terminologies used in the implementation research parts. One being implementation science. Implementation science essentially uh, is, is revolves around the study of the methods which we actually use to promote uh, a certain intervention and uh, the findings of uh, 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 implementation of a certain intervention and its evidence into actual healthcare policy of practice. So it revolves around the looking the looking into the study of the methods that we used to actually use this. So from this itself, you will understand that this is a quite this is quite a broad umbrella, uh, a broad domain. And within this domain comes the uh, subdomain of implementation research, which is essentially the scientific study of the use of strategies to adopt and integrate certain interventions. So first it is the broader study of uh, methods and implementation research is looking into one category of those methods, which are the strategies that are used to implement a certain intervention. And another subdomain of implementation science is dissemination research, where this evidence, how do we disseminate into a certain targeted population in terms of knowledge, intervention, policies, and practices to a specific public health or clinical practice audience. So implementation science is a broad umbrella under which comes implementation research that looks intervention and dissemination research looks into the scientific study of disseminating or distributing this evidence. I think this diagram will be giving you a better idea of what I was trying to explain. In the broad domain of health services, health services research comes implementation science of which implementation research and dissemination research are subdomains. But where implementation research ends and dissemination research begins, it's not as clear a line as this. And uh, all these are not, uh, it's important to note, they are not watertight compartments. Uh, it's all different shades of gray as far as the borders are concerned. Now, looking into a different, uh, as to where does implementation research fall in the traditional research pathway? So, in the traditional research pipeline, we have what we call the pre-intervention where we look into uh, pilot studies and stuff like that. And we look into 
efficacy studies including phase one trials, phase two uh, trials, phase three trials, phase one being efficacy, phase three looking into confirmatory efficacy and finally you have your effectiveness studies. So this is where most or uh, most uh, what do you say familiar research tends to be. Once we have a certain effective and efficacious technology, we bring it into the system where it is to be implemented and explore the context, the mechanisms that actually uh, happen to integrate this technology, this uh, intervention, how well is it adopted, how uh, the system and the technology both need to be prepared to be integrated into a set system, how well it is implemented in a certain uh, context, and if it's going on well, how well can it be sustained or even scaled up? This yellow box is more or less what dissemination and implementation studies domain is all about. So it's not like you implement something, you do research, it's implementation research. It exactly doesn't work like that. It's about taking an effective and efficacious technology that has been proven, putting it into real world scenario where it actually is intended and looking to what are the pros and cons that happen that promote the uptake or uh, use of uh, or, uh, uh, utility of a certain uh, uh, intervention and uh, looking into what, how things can be made better. So when we look into a, a conceptual model of implementation research as to where, again, looking into the traditional pipeline, we have certain interventions which we define and we generally look into clinical outcomes and uh, things like function satisfaction, et cetera. But in between, how do these interventions actually be put into uh, a certain system? What are the strategies that are involved? Certain outcomes like, is it feasible or not? Is it worth putting in the money and are we getting an amount uh, that is, uh, is it doable in the uh, right sense? Do we have the infrastructure? Do we have the second aspect which we look into, which is important with regard to implementation research is fidelity. Fidelity essentially looks into what was envisaged for the said intervention. And how much it was actually translated or how much of what was intended of a certain intervention, acceptable, whether it's acceptable who are delivering the said intervention to better the health of a certain range, anything as big as a linear acceleration pamphlet. So this wide spectrum includes what we call as a health technology or a health intervention. So along with that, we look into things like service outcomes, like uh, how efficiently the services are given. Is it safe both for the use uh, utilizer and the uh, people who are involved in between the stakeholders? How effective is it? Is it equitably distributed among the people who actually need the technology more? Uh, is it patient-centered and whether it's actually worth putting in the time? So if you look at implementation research, this is all, uh, more or less the domain where implementation research studies focus their, out, uh, their uh, uh, So here at this so this is now looking at how it differs from clinical research. Generally, our aim is to evaluate a certain clinical intervention, a certain health promotion intervention in the public health aspect, or a certain policy. Whereas 
uh, implementation research looks more into how it is actually implemented. What is the strategy? It essentially looks into, I mean, if you borrow from the realist philosophy, it essentially looks into who works for, what works for whom and in what context. So that strategy is what is explored in an implementation research initiative. And the typical intervention in the clinical and public health parlance is what we call is maybe a drug the procedure therapy or even a prevention program in the public health context. But when we look at an implementation research perspective, we look into something like organizational practice, change or training. Like what is needed to actually integrate this said technology or new technology into the system? What amount of training is required? What other operational aspects need to be looked into? That is the more the avenue of inquiry with regard to implementation. Now, what are the outcomes that are? We generally look into how many symptoms have been uh, like uh, like uh, uh, symptom wise is the patient better or not? You look at certain health outcomes. You look at whether the patient behavior aspects. That's more or less what we look as typical outcomes with regard to clinical or public health research. But in, uh, in implementation research, like I said earlier, uh, dimensions like adoptions, adoption of a technology, adherence, fidelity, level of implementation, these are more important. Now, what are the typical unit of analysis or randomization with regard to clinical or public health research? Generally, it's either a patient, a certain community, uh, or a set of people who are a lot of people who have uh, certain attributes that are that make them similar and uh, a more homogeneous group with respect to a certain objective. Whereas in implementation research, it's more of organizational units like clinic, a team, a facility, or a school for that matter. Now, in the traditional research pipeline, it's fine to say first we look at the efficacy. Then we look into the effectiveness of the intervention. Then we look into strategies to implement it. And then the scale up and spread and finally input in process and outcomes. One after the other, it seems like a nice pipeline. But in reality, most of all these information is needed at the same time. So, and, uh, in the, uh, so it is not like we can, uh, if somebody looks into a certain uh, implement, uh, looking uh, uh, policy uh, stakeholder wants your scientific input as to what the implementation strategies and effectiveness strategy, efficacy study, then an effectiveness study and implementation study. Often these are needed side by side. That is where hybrid designs fit in, in implementation research. It is in this area. So, with regard to hybrid designs, it simultaneously looks at certain aspects of effectiveness and certain aspects of implementation research, to say simply. So uh, broadly, hybrid trial designs are classified into three types, type 1, type 2, and type 3. Type 1 being the primary aim being to determine the effectiveness of a clinical intervention. So it's like a typical trial. You look into the effectiveness of an intervention. But it has a secondary aim to try and better understand the context for implementation. So if you are looking into, say, a behavioral intervention trial, uh, something that I'm trying to do, say, for diabetes or hypertension in Kerala, the strategies and the uh, uh, how I integrate that into the system might not be a, uh, amenable to a one-shoe-fits-all approach. Something that is practicable in Kerala might not be practical in Pakistan, might not be practical elsewhere in uh, uh, the Northeast or any, any place in the world for that matter. So understanding of the context, any implementation research is, the bedrock is a solid understanding of the context in which a certain uh, intervention is implemented. So a hybrid trial type one looks looks into the effectiveness of an intervention and a better understanding of the context. Now, when we come to the hybrid type trial two, we have an uh, almost equal footing of the effectiveness and implementation aspects where we look into the effectiveness of a technology and we look into determining the feasibility and utility of an implementation strategy. 
So here we looked into the context. This uh, type of uh, hybrid uh, implementation research looks into effectiveness and feasibility and potential utility of an implementation strategy. Now, when we come to hybrid type three, the primary aim switches over as opposed to type one, it switches over to implementation. There we look into actual real world utility. The assessment of outcomes associated with an implementation trial is just a secondary aim. It is more like a follow-up kind of a study of outcomes. So from hybrid type one to type three, we have a changing, increasing uh, spectrum increasing uh, uh, like magnitude of implementation research and a decreasing magnitude of uh, importance of uh, effectiveness of research. I mean, to try to simplify. It. This is another diagram which was used by Dr. Maria. I really like it. I mean, it's uh, it's a subway line uh, diagram of translational research. So, if we have a certain intervention in practice, I think it's better to just go through the subway line. So, we have a certain intervention of practice of interest. And the first question that comes is, is the intervention of practice, has it shown efficacy? If it hasn't shown efficacy, the thing you have to do is efficacy research or design for implementation. Efficacy research and effectiveness research could be said as what they say, the forerunners or the formative research for implementation. Now, in case efficacy has been done, yes. Then the question is, has the intervention of practice of interest shown effectiveness? If it's no, you have to do what we know as effectiveness research in terms of trials. Now, if it's no or partial, this is where our earlier said hybrid effectiveness implementation trials can be done, where we have an effectiveness aspect and an implementation aspect going side by side. Now, if the effectiveness has already been shown, we are focusing entirely on the implementation aspects, like I said, adaptability, acceptability, feasibility, things like that, fidelity like that. So for that, we can use mixed method studies to first understand the context. Like I said, in implementation research, the most important thing is the context, understanding the context, designing strategies that are implementable in the said context, and finally, testing these implementation strategies. Now, coming to the third and final aspect of this study, this uh, lecture. So, what are the different types of IR objectives, IR questions, and the methods deployed in, in IR? IR mean implementation. First thing we do is we tend to explore. Like I said, you need to explore an idea, phenomenon, or a certain context. So, what are the possible factors and agents that are responsible for a good implementation of a health intervention? For enhancing or expanding the intervention. Now, to answer such a question where we are trying to explore the context, we can use these set of methods. One being the qualitative methods, largely we tend to use the questions over here are more of a how and why needs, how things are happening and why. So, in that context, we uh, a qualitative approach might be appropriate, along with the quantitative uh, approach when it becomes a mixed methods research. So, you can it can be purely qualitative, it can be purely quantitative, as well as a mixed methods approach. Now, when then we try to describe not only the context but the different various factors that may have an influence over the outcome of implementation of a certain fact main factors influencing the implementation in a given context this again we can uh, look uh, towards using more this seems to be more amenable to a quantitative approach but at the same time there may be we may come across questions that are more uh, amenable to a qualitative approach so like any research the choice of methods uh, that we use, the nature of the methods that we use for the research is essentially depending on what is your objective. Is your what is your objective to try to understand uh, what is the difference in uh, implementation by how much or by how many? Obviously, you go for a quantitative approach. Other than that, if you want to understand what is the mechanism of why certain technologies are uh, taken up or going fine and certain technologies are not so fine you want to understand the hows and whys behind it you go for a qualitative 
suppose your question is it has both these aspects that's when you go for a mixed methods now another a domain uh, avenue of inquiry which is generally apart from to describe and explore is to in, uh, see what is the influence with respect to adequacy with respect to plausibility and with respect to uh, the probability of certain technology being accepted or not so uh, so uh, essentially it looks into whether uh, it is there, whether there is a sufficient confidence that the interventions and outcomes are occurring whether there is a greater confidence that the outcome is due to the intervention per se and is can be actually come about a quantitative estimate as to how much or can you quantify this possible gain or uh, the implementation outcome the result that the result that comes out of the intervention so that is another aspect and uh, finally we look into trying to explain or predict certain implementation outcomes like if you are looking into explain like uh, it looks into how to develop or expand the theory to explain the relationship between the concepts and the reasons for occurrence of events and how they occur so again uh, among these all these three slide four slides which i've shown you so uh, one thing one thing important uh, uh, among the slides which i've shared with you you must come across the fact the understanding that implementation research largely prefers a mixed methods approach so a mixed methods approach is almost often ideal with regard to implementation research uh, so uh, uh, in that aspect um so with that aspect it's essentially uh, the message what i want to uh, give across is that implementation research largely favors a mixed methods approach but it's not necessary that every implementation research has to be mixed methods you can go for, uh, for uh, an implementation research can be purely qualitative or purely quantitative it depends entirely Actually, what is your implementation research first? So I guess that wraps up most of what I wanted to say, and uh, I'd like to end this session with a favorite quote of mine by Mark Twain: "It ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble; it's what you know for sure that just ends." So I guess that's a very apt quote in the context of implementation research. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for your patient listening. Thank you, Dr. Hisham, for the very enlightening talk. And I think uh, your talk would actually clear a lot of misconceptions about implementation research and also clear uh, and, and provide uh, much better clarity about what really people think about implementation research. Uh, and I think uh, uh, COVID pandemic has actually shown us how uh, and the value of implementation research is so important in managing not just the pandemic, but also uh, managing a lot of applications, technologies, implementation of policies in the broader aspects of health sciences. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hisham, for taking time out and uh, speaking in this session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Vinod, and thank you, Epidemic Watch, once again.